Welcome to the Bible study for April 30th, 2020 at the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for all that you've done to protect us lately. We pray now that you will show us your truth and help us to live in your truth according to your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Here at Mount Sinai, we've been studying for uh, several, uh, at least two years about systematic theology. And uh, we've learned, first of all, that systematic theology is any study that answers the question, what does the whole Bible teach us today about any given topic? Uh, in our study so far, we've uh, as we're studying uh, now on the doctrine of the Word of God, we've looked at four sections, uh, and we're in the last one now. The first section was uh, God's Word as a decree, which means uh, God says something and it causes something to happen. Just as in Genesis when God said, let there be light, there was light, something happened. And then the second one is God's word of personal address. God says something personal to an individual, uh, like in Genesis where uh, God came in the cool of the evening and, and uh, called to Adam and asked him where he was. That's a personal address to an, a person. And then thirdly, it was God's spoken word through the lips of human beings. And there have been many, uh, like Moses, for instance, gave the Ten Commandments. He, 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 he passed on to God's chosen people God's word that was given to him upon Mount Sinai. And now we're looking at God's word in written form. From God's word in written forms, we are working on an idea uh, this week, or we've been working on it for a few weeks now, of what defiles a person. What does the Bible say today about what defiles a person? And that we we're looking at what does the whole Bible say about what defiles us. And tonight, uh, our su subject matter is deceit deceit. Uh, our base uh, verses comes from Mark chapter 7 verse 14 through 23 which reads, and he called the people to him again and said to them, hear me all of you and understand there is nothing outside of a person that is by going into him can defile him. But the things that come out of a person are what defiles him. And when he had entered the house and left the people, his disciples asked him about the parable. And he said to them, Then are you also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile him? Since it enters not into his heart, but his stomach, and ex is expelled. This he declared all food clean. And then verse 20 says, and he said, what comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of man comes evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, Deceit, which is what we're going to cover tonight. And then in the uh, coming weeks, we'll look at sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. And all of these things, Jesus says, comes from within and they defile a person. Now, as we look at deceit, we'll start with the idea of what is deceit. Deceit uh, is uh, like being deceitful or deceives Deceiving a person, a deception, or, or it's kind of like a decoy. Uh, duck, uh, duck hunters uh, put decoys out in the lake and, and uh, uh, the real ducks will see the decoys and think they are real ducks and come down and join them. And in no time at all, bullets are flying and, 
And, and I guess that's a good indication that uh, deceitfulness or deceit can be dealt de deadly. You can be deceived into thinking something is good when it's really bad. So be careful about deceit. It can also means to beguile, like in Genesis chapter 3, verse 8, and they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, uh, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you? that you were naked. Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? And the man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree and I ate. Then the Lord said to the woman, what is this that you have done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. So that was the beginning of the blame game or, or deceit and, and, and trying to put the, the blame for being deceived on somebody else. Uh, first, second Corinthians, I'm sorry, second Corinthians chapter 11, verse three says, but I'm afraid, this is Paul talking to the Corinthians. And he says, I'm afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, your minds will be led astray from the simplicity and purity of devotion to Christ. Paul was afraid that false teachers would attempt to deceive or lead the Corinthians into error. He was afraid the false teachers would practice things which would mislead them or cause them to believe what was false. Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 9 says the heart is deceitful. Now he, he's, he's not speaking in general so much as he's speaking in specifics. Each of our hearts are deceitful. And above all things, uh, deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. And who can know it? I'm glad God is saying that and, and not me because I would love to be excluded from that statement. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. And who can know it? The Old Testament frequently uses heart to identify the source of a person's thinking or acting. It describes the root of unconscious as well as conscious motivations. The human heart is deceptive. We may think we know what we uh, would do, or we may think that we would do or not do something, but really, we may be doing it for another reason. It's it is naturally incurably sick. That's our heart. Really totally depraved and in need of healing. No one really understand his or her own corrupt heart, nor do we understand why our heart behave as they do. No wonder King David said, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. King David had no idea that there was as much deceit in his heart that was. And even after he had committed such a, such a dis, despicable act as having a laying with another man's wife that was out on the battlefield it, for him. And then he sent and had the man brought home and tried to get him to go to lay with his wife so that he would think that he was the one impregnated her instead of King David. 
And then since the, even though the man would not go home, he said, I've got men, I'm a leader, and I've got men out on the battlefield, and it's not right for me to be here with my wife, and they are that are out there on the battlefield. So he refused to go to his wife. And then David had him sent back to the ba battlefield with a note that said, when the enemy advances, all of you guys withdraw and leave him up there by himself so that he will surely be killed. And then David went on about his life not realizing how wrong he had been until the day that God sent Nathan to him. And Nathan told him, he said, uh, you're king, and I've got a matter for you to judge. He said, there was this man that had many sheep, had a visitor come. And, and there was another man that had one little sheep. This man that with one sheep was not as important as the man with many sheep. This important man with the many sheep would not uh, kill one of his lambs, but sent and got the man that only had one, got his lamb, and killed him and dressed him for his visitor. What do you think should happen to him? And King David, not realizing what he had done, what had come out of his heart, said, bring him to me, and I'll have his head. And it was only when the prophet Nathan said to King David, you are the man. You are the one that did something like that. It was only then that David realized how deceitful his heart really was. And that's when David went to God in the 51st Psalms and said, According to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgression, create in me a clean heart, and renew a right spirit within me. And then I'll teach transgressors thy way, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. The heart of every problem is the problem in the heart. And the human heart is deceitful and it's incurable of ourselves. We often say, well, if I know my own heart, but we don't know our own heart, but God does. He searches the heart and mind and knows exactly how to reward each person. If we want to know what our hearts are like, we must read God's word and let the Spirit of God teach us. The heart of the Jewish leaders were turned away from the Lord and his truth, and consequently, they made unwise decisions and plunged the whole nation into ruin. I dare not suggest that perhaps this is the problem that America is being confronted with right now. The deceitfulness of Jacob towards his brother Esau. Allow me to, 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 to share some of the story. A brother against a brother. Genesis chapter 25 verse 26 through 28 says, afterwards his brother came out with his hand holding Esau's heel. This is their birth. So his name was called Jacob, and Isaac, his father, was 60 years old when his wife bore or gave birth to these twins, Esau and Jacob. Esau came out first with Jacob holding on to his heel. And when the boys grew up, Esau was a skillful hunter. 
and a man of the field, while Jacob was a quiet man dwelling in tents. Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Now the story goes on in, in chapter, 30, uh, chapter 27, uh, verses 26 through 36. I'll just read some of that. It says, Rebekah said to her son, I heard your father speak to your brother Esau. Bring me game and prepare for me a delicious food that I may eat it and bless you before the Lord uh, before I die. Now, therefore, my son, obey my voice as I command you. Go to the flock and bring me two good uh, young goats. That, that now, as, as Esau is going to hunt, Rebekah is talking to Jacob and giving him instructions. She says, go and bring me two good young goats so that I may prepare from them a delicious food for your father, such as he loves. And you shall bring it to your father to eat so that he may bless you before he dies. But Jacob didn't but Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, Behold, my brother Esau is hairy, and I am a smooth man. Perhaps my father will fill me, and I shall seem to be mocking or deceiving him, and bringing a curse upon myself and not a blessing. His mother said to him, Let your curse be on me, my son. Only obey my voice and go and bring them to me. So he went and took them and brought them to his mother and his mother prepared delicious food such as his father loved. And then Rebekah Becca took the best garment of Esau, her older son, which were with her in the house and put them on Jacob, her younger son. And the skin of the young goats she put on his hands and on the smooth part of his neck. And she put the delicious food and the bread which she had prepared into the hands of Jacob, her son, so that he went in to his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I. Who are you, my son? And Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. Deception at its best. He says, I have done as you told me, and now sit and eat of my game that your soul may bless me. But Isaac said to his son, how is it that you have found it so quickly, my son? And he answered, because the Lord your God granted me success. And then Isaac said to Jacob, please come near that I may feel you, my son, to know whether you are really my son Esau or not. So Jacob went near to Isaac, his father, who felt him and said, the voice of Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he did not recognize him because his hands were hairy like his brother Esau's hand. So he blessed him and said, Are you really my son Esau? And he answered, I am. And then he said, Bring it near me that I may eat of my son's game and bless you. So he brought it near to him and he ate. And he brought him wine and he drank. And so then his father Isaac said to him, come near and kiss me, my son. So he came near and kissed him. And Isaac smelled the smell of his garment and blessed him. Jacob had, Rebekah had had Jacob to put on Esau's garment that had the smell of Esau on it. I, and, and, and so he said, see, the smell of my son is the smell of a field that 
uh, the Lord has blessed. May God give you of the dew of heaven and of the fatness of the earth and of plenty of grain and wine. Let the people serve you. Nations bow down to you. Be Lord over your brothers and may your mother's sons bow down to you. Cursed be everyone who curse you and blessed be everyone who blesses you. As soon as Isaac has, had finished blessing Jacob, when Jacob had scarcely gone out from the presence of Isaac, his father, Esau, his brother, came in from hunting. And he also prepared a dish, delicious meal and brought it to his father. And he said to his father, let my father arise and eat of his son's game that he may bless me. And his father, Isaac, said to him, who are you? And he answered, I'm your son, your firstborn, Esau. Then Isaac trembled very violently and said, Who was it then that hunted game and brought it to me? And I ate it all before you came, and I have blessed him. Yes, he shall be blessed. As soon as Isaac heard the words of his father, he cried out with an exceedingly great and bitter cry and said to his father, Bless me, even me also, O my father. But he said, Your brother came deceitfully, and he has taken away your blessing. Esau said, Is he rightly named Jacob? For he has cheated me, these two times, he took away my birthright, and behold, now he has taken away my blessings. And then he said, have you not reserved a blessing for me? And that's all of the story that I'm going to say to uh, share with you. But this last verse, and then I'm finished for the night. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. In other words, God is not deceived. For, whoever, for whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked or God is not deceived. For whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We pray now that you would move in such a way that it will come alive within us and that we will walk in your way, that we will not lean to our own understanding, but in all of our ways we will acknowledge you that you may direct our path. For you have told us that the steps of a good man are ordered by you and you delight in his way. Help us to walk by faith and not by sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, that's it for this week, and we'll see you next time. May God bless you and keep you.